Hi everybody. <clears throat> I um, finished uh, this watercolor yesterday and posted a tutorial on it and I thought it would be for me exciting to try to do what's called an abstract landscape painting and do that in acrylics. So I'm going to show you how I have started that process. You can see the waves here, the sky and the darkening clouds, the darkening sky coming this way and the, and the um, sails. So I haven't drawn anything here, but what I have done is just taken um, a canvas like this, which is already gessoed, and I've put the tape on the back to protect and keep that fairly clean. I've taken some gauze and dipped it. I don't know if I'll be able to open this <clears throat> again. I should be able to. I just closed it. Well, I can't open it now, but I've dipped it in this uh, Golden's gel gloss which um, allows you to apply things to canvas and, um, and move them around. And, and when the gloss dries, it's, it's sort of like a glue. It's not a glue, but it's sort of like a glue. And it's transparent. And so if I had used a colored cloth or anything else, it would let that show through. And then I took uh, Daniel Smith's acrylic gesso and with my hockey um, brush, put that in a lot of places all around the um, place where I had put the, the white gauze. There's no paint on the white gauze, no white paint. Because what I wanted to do was create dramatic texture. So I put a lot of the Goldens, I mean the Daniel Smith, um, it's called iridescent gold. It's a gesso rather than a paint, but I'm hoping that some of the metallic sheen will come through and um, still be in the final painting because I like that. Creates a little different iridescence in, as the light shifts. And then I took this this hockey brush and I just put on paint randomly, very heavy to try to have some pinks over here, some teal, moving into some darker blues, some thala blues, some ultramarine blues, some magenta, and some blacks, as the sky moves to a darker area, and put some of that dark um, between some of these white uh, soft gauze cloths. Now this is going to have to dry for a day or two. It has to be completely dry before I work on it the next time. So all I'm doing this time is just showing you how I prepared the base. So let me just take a little bit of this gesso. You can see how beautiful it is and put some of that on my hockey, hockey brush and just show you this is the kind of random brush stroke that I put in here and there. And some of it's some of it's actually I put a little bit on the waves. And then I put other colors on top of that. Like here that's this is um Liquitex turquoise. So I just squeeze some color there used my brush, and I'll hold this here, uh, and just mixed randomly. And if I took a little bit of pink, I've got my pink tourmaline here, squeeze a little bit of that on. So this is just to create um, the basis to start have some interesting colors in there. That didn't work out very well. My brush got 
too much dark on it for that. Let me clean that off. Get another brush. Since I made a mess of that, I have to put a little bit of white over here because I want this lighter over here. Another brush, another hockey brush, a little cleaner. Dip in some more of the, the gesso. And it's it's quite, uh, the, the, the coat of paint is quite thick. And um, I'm going to take a little bit of pink tourmaline, which is also metallic. And I don't mind, I'm mixing some gesso with some metallic paint and some opaque paint. Um, the, my point right now is just to create, I'll take a little bit of this one, Coastal Waters by Art Mines. And um, I just want to create some diversity and texture and let that dry. Okay. And then the next step will be to put in the boat and detail the waves and create more of a sense of it being an abstract. So, I hope that you found this interesting. This is how I'm starting this painting. Um, and with these things I have the Daniel Smith Gold Gesso. I did put over here uh, some Golden's the manufacturer Golden's Black Gesso underneath. And then as I mentioned, I used this soft gel gloss to affix, uh, basically put this in the gloss, rubbed it around, got it really gooey and messy, and, and then just laid it down and stuck it around where I wanted to have waves. Now, even though I have a painting that I'm using as for my ideas, my inspiration for this is this painting. But my plan here, as you can see, I'm going to take this wave up higher and have it be more dramatic. The sky is going to be darker here. Um, and then here there's just going to be the indication of sails and people. Uh, it'll be more abstract um, than this painting, which is not abstract at all. But this gives you an idea. I just want a little more power here in that surge of tidal wave and um, and the darkness and the threatening doom, but the light over here. I like very much to create paintings where there's darkness coming in and beautiful light here and, and create that kind of emotional feel. So that's the sense of what is going to happen here. Um, I'm just going to keep that painting there as inspiration, but not replicate it. And after a couple of days, I'll come back and we'll do some more detailed work on this. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for coming to visit me on my little tutorial. This one will be fully acrylic, not watercolor. Hello again. Um, I wanted to show you the painting um, at where it is right now. Um, the the waves that were made with uh, soft gauze, medical gauze, and attached with uh, Golden's gel gloss are still not dry. So I focused the work on the sky. And um, I wanted to show you uh, the fact that I've started to sketch in, you know, I, I mentioned to you earlier that um, this particular um, watercolor that I had just finished this past week serves as the basis for creating now an abstract uh, seascape. And um, the hard part for me is always to stretch myself to try to be more abstract. But nevertheless, I've started to put in um, the, the lines um, the key lines, so there's lines for the rigging that I used um, this stirring uh, stirring stick for. 
and putting in the mast and some more lines for rigging and then two sails here and they'll be um, the boat will be like this and there'll be people in there and what I used for that was this um, graphite aquarelle pencil and on the areas that are more dark I, I can use just a pastel stick and, and that easily rubs off but it can help to put in some of the lines in the dark areas so just a pastel stick I just thought one of the things I would do, um, I used a, my Haku brush initially and then I used um, a soft bristle brush for the sky and just gently put in different colors and I blended them with my fingers and um, I wanted to show you the colors because the the colors are a little different than what many um, what many use and so like this color is deep violet by golden and I added this color shift paint of purple flash to that I keep these colors in a tube uh, this one is um, cobalt blue to which I added this color shift um, blue violet flash and then I had this uh, Liquitex turquoise to which I added um, turquoise color shift flash and then I, I added some art mine colors so I have some of that deep violet here and some of that cobalt blue here and then some of that turquoise here and these colors here are just phthalo blue and black but this light blue over here is an art mines color and a little darker here is also an art mines color and so these two art mine colors are sea glass and coastal waters very nice colors and um, and then there's a little bit of sort of shimmering aquamarine and that is actually a uh, deco art extreme sheen metallic now I wanted to show you some of the other metallics uh, this pink tourmaline in here that is made with deco art extreme sheen and this wonderful light pink metallic is rose quartz rose quartz and then I have some wonderful gold here and there I had shown you before that I had used the uh, De Daniel Smith uh, gold gesso but this um, extreme sheen uh, 24 karat gold is a much more um, bright gold so I wanted to just show you the colors and I wanted to show you how I use the pastel in the dark areas, a light pastel, like I'll indicate that there'll be people there, okay, and some of the lines. But for the areas that were light, I used the I used this aquarelle graphite pencil. So I I put some phthalo blue and black in between the waves. They're still soft and not quite dry yet um, with the gauze and the um, gel gloss. So I'm going to wait until they're totally dry before I work on them further. But since this part didn't have that, that heavy texturing added, um, I just blended in colors. and like I'll just show you some of them at the very end I just blended in by putting 
a little bit on, I know, on the dab of my finger and just finding an area and blending it in. So you can see a few little areas where I put in put it in. This is the pink tourmaline. But I took the colors at the very end after doing the brush work, just blended in softly some colors. And I'm always careful to wash my hands right away. Now these extreme sheen colors and these other colors that I've used all have uh, this medium in them, uh, which is called um, Floetrol. It eliminates brush and roller marks and improves flow and leveling. And I use that because um, it lets me put these paints in these containers and have them stay usable for a very, very long time. These have been in these containers that I used on this painting for a good month at least, and, and they don't cake up at all, and they stay ready to use. But then there are other times that I want to use the tube paints directly right from the tube in a heavier consistency with a palette knife or a brush. And when I do these waves, I'll be using the the white from a tube directly to make the waves. and um, But I might do this part here with the phthalo blue that I already have mixed with some Floetrol. It just makes it thinner. Instead of using water, I don't use any water in my paints, but I use the Floetrol or sometimes I use uh, glazing media by Liquitex if I want it to be a slightly transparent. So that's all I'm going to talk about in this part of the video is to just give you an idea of the materials used and where we are at this stage and, is, and tomorrow we'll come back and do the sails and do the rigging and the mast, maybe put the people in and the very last part will be to put in some of the splashing and some of the wave action and then maybe see if I can take it to another level of some possible abstraction after that. Okay, thank you for visiting. I hope you enjoy this. Hi again. I'm um I've been trying to think of what I could do while I'm waiting for some areas to be ready for the final stages of painting and what would come next. So I thought about it and I think one of the things I would like to do next is use a dark and create a few of the lines that will help me later to know where I want to put things. So I want to put this strong crossed bar And I do want to put the strong mast so that I don't lose my view of where that's going to be. Because as I move forward with the painting, um, some of these lines will be rubbed off and I won't be able to see them very well. And basically the mast and the rigging are the lines that more or less define to me the dimensions of this boat. 
and I may make those more abstract later, but for now I would like to put them in and be fairly clear about where I've decided that they will be. dogs barking out there. They always know how to get me to stop painting. Um, <clears throat> but I'll continue and hopefully they'll behave themselves reasonably. The other thing I'm going to use now is one of these things here. And I'm just going to put it in this black. It's a mixture of black and blue paint. Black with ivory black with phthalo blue. And I'm just going to rub the edge of it in that to create this rigging line. You see how I've just put it on the edge? Because I'm not going to use a brush. It's too thin a line. And I like the little bit of roughness that it creates there. Because this is supposed to be an abstract so, <clears throat> then there's another line here. Yeah, let's just make it give it a little sense of being an abstract by being willing to be a bit more rough there. <clears throat> then there's one here that's coming down. Now I may want to make this mast a little more. But I'll and then there's another one here. And I don't want them all the same size. So, and then there's um, this one down here. I don't want it to cut through that sail. <clears throat> so I'll use a fine brush for that one. Because it uh, actually goes behind the sail. But I'll make it a little bit edgy. Okay. Now, <clears throat> the other thing that... So I'll just wipe the color off of this. I just use a roll of paper towel and work like that. And I've got two of these. Uh, I could have used either one of them. For that. Now, um, the other thing I want to do is create that sail. Now, I don't. I, the sail has a, a rope that is basically the strength of the rigging, but I don't want it necessarily quite as dark. So I'm mixing it with some, I'm mixing that black with some cobalt blue. And I'm just going to draw the edge of the sail because the, the, strong, the strong rigging kind of is along the side of the sail and holding it in place as the sail unfurls. So it's a strong, it's a strong and and dramatic a line as the rigging. But I want to do it a little rough because the whole idea is to um, have this be a little rough. And I'll let it <coughs> go down. <coughs> and then the sail <coughs> has a bar at the base holding it and um, there's usually a canvas bag where the sail unfurls from the canvas bag. But I won't worry about this at this point. Okay, I'm going to bring this down at this point. I may cover up part of that later with some white splashing, but it's better to bring it down now. <clears throat> And I'm 
doing this, as you can see, in a very rough, kind of ragged way. I don't want this to be too much of a realist kind of look. So this sail is coming down here, like this, behind the wave, and it, it curves like this, but then part of it is pulled back like this. And this is all going to come down behind the wave and like that. Yeah, okay. Now that's, <clears throat> I'm still going to paint in that sail, these sails. Um, probably a little bit with glazing media so that some of the paint below shows through. Okay, just to frame out the, the view of the sails. I'm going to make this a little bit lighter blue here. Probably be covering up some of this line but a little bit lighter blue. Okay. And then there's some rigging coming down here. Let's get that rigging coming down here. All right. Now, the thing about the sail, and I think I'm going to do this in teal for now, is that it does have this these designs of how it's sewn together. So I'm just going to do that in, in teal at this point. Okay. And then on the inside, inside the sail also. There's this, these lines where the pieces of fabric are sewn together. So that's just some rough placement there. And um, to, do, to do this, I'm using uh, my, my palette where, my Sanderson palette, where there's a sponge at the bottom underneath the special paper. I'm not sure what the paper is made of. I think it's something like a Tyvek. But there's a sponge below that is wet, and then the special paper. And this paint has been on this palette for weeks now. And I just put the my Tupperware cover over it, and um, I don't know why the dogs are barking, but they are. So I'm going to put some heads here. Usually to indicate people, we don't get carried away with them. And then we just put the shoulders below. And then the body comes down. To indicate there are people there. And those people would all be on this side in order to um, be helping to stabilize the boat in these rough seas. And then I'm just going to take some dark and and indicate the the lines of the boat. For now. Okay, and there'll be some wave there coming over.
So most of the boat will not be able to be seen. Um, it's going to be behind this giant wave and just the edge of the boat is tipping up and, um, and these people are seen a little bit. Okay. And I think, um, yeah, there'll be, I think that's it for now. Uh, basically, that needs to dry, and that sort of frames things out, and um, then I can, you know, I wipe my brushes very carefully on this paper, um, like this, and then I wash them. But I try to get as much of the paint off this way before putting them, putting any paint down my sink. So that's where we are for now and that's going to dry and then we have um, a structure laid out a bit to work with and hopefully this will eventually turn out to be a reasonable painting. I hope you enjoyed it and thank you for visiting. So, so much of my painting process seems to be um, looking at the painting, thinking about it, sleeping on it, trying to figure out what to do, and then making little marks in between and thinking about it some more. So, I wanted to show you this. Um, what I've done is taken some glazing fluid by Liquitex and I have mixed that at a ratio of one to one with um, white paint and glazed over the the sails with that mixture and and let some of the colors below shine through. And then, and then I put into that white little bits of the sky color uh, already in the process of glazing. I had let some of the colors below come through the glazed material because it's semi-transparent like you can see here. And so I've added bits of the sky color which are pink. There's some soft yellow and gold and I've let some of that come through as it would give the impression of being reflected by the white sail. So that was the process of that. And then as I had done with the black to make these marks using this little uh, painting device, I had taken some white and just run it through the, the solid, I mean the white tube paint which is um, white to paint in order to get the edge having a certain amount of white. And I had made some marks. I'll show you one. I'll do another one. No, I'll do it here. Okay. Because I am really trying very hard to do an, an acrylic abstract. Okay? So I want to have a certain amount of the realism of this image, but not a lot. Not, I want it to have some abstract quality. The other thing I did was I took this truly wonderful color by Golden 
it's called teal and I put that on my palette um, I'm sort of a someone who always collects lots of colors and I do that in watercolor and I do that here um, I put some of that teal in different ways in the painting making some kind of very bright unexpected color and some marks um, but what I wanted to do to show you is I'm going to make one teal one kind of dramatic teal mark I'm putting that through my uh, teal paint without any medium added, no water added, again, in this way, on this device. And I'm going to just run that up through here. It's not rigging, it's just a mark. And I'm going to run it a little bit here. Okay. Um, because I want to have the abstract feel to go through this this painting. So then after that I just take my paper towel and clean it like that. Uh, I keep the roll on the side here and it makes it easy to um, just rub the paint off. And that way I minimize how much paint I put into the sink and water system. Now I'm going to take this uh, Utrecht brush and see if I can start to indicate some of the waves. I'm not sure this is going to be the brush that will work, but what I want to do, let's see, I'm going to try to have, I want bits of heavy paint come up and begin the process of extending this this gauze that I put on here with Golden's gel and I put some black paint inside some of these things. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a little bit of paint to indicate waves and splashing. But then I'm going to work with my palette knife to really lay down more paint. And at the very end we'll do splashing, uh, splattering to indicate that. I'm just going to do a little section while you're watching um, because this is going to take a little while. It's going to take quite a while actually. This will be the hardest part of the painting because if this is not done in a way that creates a certain amount of sense of reality then the rest um, will not really work. I'm just going to do some sections and see how they work. Anything that doesn't quite work, uh, I still will have. The nice thing about acrylic is you just can keep painting over it. It's not like the watercolor, which is so hard to fix. Now, I showed you before that this is the watercolor that I'm working from that I did last week. And I'm basically trying to convert that to a, an acrylic abstract, uh, just to show you how you can take an idea and do it in different ways. And, you know, I remember I started with um, gauze for wrapping wounds. 
and put Golden's gel gloss on that and tape down these three uh, lines. So I'm going to put paint on much of that gauze and take some of that teal mixed with the because there's always a little bit of the blue shining through reflecting the sky and where the it shines through the, the wave. So put some of the very some of that teal in within the blue and uh, within the white and some of that teal within the white to get a little bit of um, the underside of the wave where the light is shining through. This is all being done in a very rough way. I'm going to put some of that down here too. And I've got a little bit of gold in there, you can see, a um, little sparkle from the gold that was put on. And there's some black in the shadow areas of this. So this is going to be done a little bit rough. But I'm going to do more um, over time. But let me just show you the techniques that I'm going to use. I'm going to take now, wipe the paint off that brush on the paper towel. I'm going to take a palette knife. I'm going to use this one. Okay. And I'm going to um, really clump on some paint. I want to I want to make sure that there are not so obvious borders between that gauze and the the canvas below. So I'm going to clump on some paint indicating in a rough way. Got a little bit of pink that got on there. It's all right. Letting a little bit of pink go in there um, because it does carry forward the color of the sky. Okay. Um, so I'm carrying that forward in that way. main thing is to have the, the feeling of action and, and texture from those waves. So then one more thing I'm going to do just to, I'm going to take some of that white paint and I'm going to put it on a special board. <coughs>
So this particular white paint is uh, Sennelier. Um, Sennelier, and it comes in this kind of container, which keeps it very nice. And um, I like these containers for, um, there it is, Sennelier Titanium White. Um, I go, you go through a lot of white in a painting. So um, what I'm going to do is take that white and put a lot of water on it in my spray bottle. Okay. And I'm mixing it up with my fingers. It's very wet. Okay. And then I'm going to take it on the ends of my fingers and flick it onto the paint painting. Okay. And um, that's to get the kind of splashing that I might want. I've got a little bit too much in the um, upper part. Just, just wipe that off. It's not a problem. Okay, there. Yeah. I had a little bit of blue on the on there, but that also is not a problem. Just take a little bit of white and go over it with my finger. Okay. <clears throat> the thing is to just have the process be a bit loose and um, in order to create some some drama. And that blob is just a little too big for a drop. But let's see, I can go like that. Okay. Blend it in a little bit on that sail. Okay. Now, another way that I can show you to do that is that I'm going to do it for the more fine areas of spray is I'm going to take a toothbrush, a stiff one. Is that stiff enough? Let's see. I've got a lot of toothbrushes here. Mm, this one's a little better. And I'm going to rub it in that, <clears throat> that wet white paint. Add a little bit more. Because I want to have some... I think I'll remove that particular one. I want to have some... Um, Yeah, rub it in that white paint. Because here in the back, I think you can see that, yes. I want a little finer spray. Okay. In the distance. Okay. And up here, a little finer spray. Yeah, not so heavy as down closer to the wave. So this is just by taking my finger and doing this. Good. So now you can see how I'm going to continue with this painting um, in bits and pieces and finish it up. Um, you don't need to see every single stroke and I'll do it bit by bit as time goes by. I think I, I, think I need a little bit more of the fine spray in the back here. Yeah. And maybe a little bit down here. Just a little bit. A little more up here. Okay. So I'll come back to you. Thank you for joining me. Okay, this painting is just about finished. I'm continuing with this Sennelier white paint and putting it in a few places. Um, this is titanium white. 
in the abstract series of Sennelier because it's a heavy body and really allows you to do some nice abstract work because it really holds its shape. It's very strong, it's highly pigmented. Uh, it's made in France, Sennelier. I like also their watercolors. Um, our youth, mostly Daniel Smith and Sennelier watercolors. Um, in acrylics I use a lot of the golden. Um, they make some wonderful colors, but this this particular tube paint is really heavy bodied and um, most of the paints are soft bodied or medium bodied. So you can do some things with this that you can't do with some of the others. Put a little pink here. Yeah, a little, just a little pink. And carry that, that pink forward. That is um, really nice pink. I like it a lot. It's a uh, pink made by Artesa, and it's a medium body uh, paint. Comes in a tube. It's called Pink by Artesa. I think, let me think, one more thing. Is there one more place where I really need a little texture? Not to be too smooth right there. And maybe not to be too smooth right there. some kind of harmony in the um, in the marks so that nothing is too um, out of sync with the overall painting. I'm going to put a little bit of a turquoise mark up here. are all covered with paint, so it makes it a little hard to blend. Let me just use paper towel. I'm going to blend a little bit here. Oh, I don't want that mask covered. And in fact, I think I'm going to put a little bit of black on that mask anyway, so It is a really important key part of the boat, and I don't want it to be lost in the in the process with all the other marks. So I've just put a very, very big, thick mark there with the palette knife. And basically, I think this painting is done. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoyed uh, seeing this process. I enjoyed doing it. I hadn't used the gauze with the golden um, before. I wanted to see how it worked. I'd used the gauze with rice paper, and that worked very nicely with the golden uh, gel to adhere it to the paper. But I thought I would try this soft gauze. I had lots of it from a wound this year, so. Might as well use it up. Take care. Bye.